welcome to today's episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. Today we have returning guest and uh, just all around awesome person, Morgan Thompson. Morgan's got Hi. a movie coming out, a bunch of movies coming out. Holy crap. Yeah, a lot. Yes. And, yes. and one of them is, is uh, and now become hugely internet famous uh, <laughs> <laughs> with the Crackoon. I, I remember oh when it God. first popped up, I, I put, I, I did the Indiegogo. I bought, I think, the, the DVD or the Blu-ray, one of the two. Oh, this sounds great. And now it's like blowing up because it's insane. But it's my, it's going to be, I have a feeling it's going to be my Jason Biggs moment. You know how he's like known as the pie fucker. I'm going to yep. be forever known as the chick that got ate out by the raccoon. <laughs> That's just Ugh. forever going to be my thing, man. If I ever get to do conventions and stuff, they're going to be like, oh my God, you played that one girl in Crackoon. And I'm going to go, yeah, I sure did. <laughs> that was me. That was me. <laughs> now, how you got, geez, I'm sitting there. I, I was just looking at your, 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 your list of everything you're currently working on. Uh, the House to Eat Flesh, The First Harvest. Um, the House Eats Flesh was years ago, and I don't know what's happening with that one, so I can't even say if it's going to come out, because I just don't know with that one. All right. What about uh, Killer Camp Out Part 2? That's Brad Twig, and he's, um, I'm pretty sure he's, like, almost done editing. I don't know. I'll have to ask Brad about that. Yeah. But, yeah, that one will be out soon. You got Dinner with the God of War. Um, so I didn't get to film my roles as Hecate, Hecate, or however you want to pronounce it. Um, and Jarrell is like still working on getting back to me about that. Uh, he still wants me to to do that. But I'm also under the impression that editing has already begun. So I'm just, I'm not really sure about that one. So I'm leaving everything up for now until I get word otherwise. Yeah. You got your Friday the 13th fan film. You got the triple uh... Xmas. And you oh have my the, god, I'm so excited for it. I'm so excited for Triple Xmas. Oh my god. You have the best name ever in that movie, Krispy Kreme. Yes. Krispy Kreme is literally my dream porn star name. I'm probably never gonna do porn, but if I do porn, it's gonna be that's gonna be my uh that's gonna be my name. <laughs> so sweet you give them diabetes. Absolutely. So sweet I'm giving diabetes. Oh my god. <laughs> Bring your insulin. Uh we got Melancholy, Raccoon, Russell Massacre 2, which I donated to, too. Uh, Looks like Waspzilla, Killer Kong. I just got fil uh, finished filming, I just, like, two days, two days ago I got home. No, not even two days. Yesterday I got home um, from filming Waspzilla and Killer Kong in Virginia. There... I'm, I'm watching all these people. You, Angel, freaking, uh, uh, just... Oh, you everybody is everywhere traveling everywhere to film everywhere at any yeah. given time i was like where are you at this week they're like we're in we're in illinois where are you at next week i'm in virginia where are you at next week north carolina where are you at like, everybody's everywhere. yeah the nice wow. thing is we're all down south so like you know that's pretty cool i've only had to travel further north <laughs> twice i think so yeah it's so I, I gotta ask Waspzilla you just finished in Killer Kong how did that go it went great um I love that I got to spend a week with Angel she's my favorite I love working with her she's so fucking talented it's like crazy like she's she's going places that girl is so talented I, I just got done talking to Don the other day because he sent me uh, um, uh, Debbie Does Demons. So I watched that, did a review of it, and talked with him about it. And then I got another, I'm going to talk with him uh, on uh, Wednesday again for his movie called None Dead. But uh -huh, I was in None Dead. He has done nothing but praise you and Angel. About I how good love you're doing. him. And you have no idea how happy, because like, I seriously, seriously, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I've watched this man's movies since I was a kid. Like, Dorm of the Dead was, I, I mean, I, I'm 25. So like, that was 
peak childhood horror for me when that came out. That was a big, that was a big deal. And like, my dad has always been such a big fan of B movies. So like Donald's name was like a staple in our house and, and having the opportunity to work with him. And then he wants to work with me again. And he actually enjoys working with me. And like, it's not just, you know, the run of the mill compliments were, which are equally I'm like amazing and I'm grateful for. I mean, he digs in depth and like tells me the things that he likes about me. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. man, that's what I appreciate about you. Okay. <laughs> that Don is, is one of my favorite interviews. Uh, that guy, one is, is that he's information he has in his head all the movies that he's he's worked on everything and then he's we, we talk and now it's like oh you know i know this person and this person he tells me and he's like oh i i love working with them i can't wait to work with him like he's telling me about how much he loved working with you and in, in uh debbie does demons how he's ready to work with you again on some more movies and i'm like yeah i was like this it, it's you <laughs> watching debbie does demons you can tell everybody was just having a really good time Oh, such a blast to film. I mean, and I had so many firsts and he coached me through quite a few things. And it was, I just, it was a dream. It was a dream as, as a new actress coming back into, you know, doing movies after so long, it was amazing. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a blast and he's, he's, it's funny. Cause he called, he'll message me. And he was like, Hey, I got another movie or Hey, I want this person. I'm like, yeah, sure. I, I will. Hell yeah. We'll do interviews. <laughs> And <laughs> that's how he messages me. He messaged me about a role for his new movie. And it's just, that's exactly how it went. He was like, Hey, I've got a role for you. This is what you're going to be doing. I've already made the announcement. I'm going to be sending you the script. And I'm like, Oh, Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Donald. He, he, he sends me a, he sends me a message the other day and he goes, Hey, I, I, I want to do an interview. And I'm like, okay, let me figure out what day we can do it. And I'm like, Hell yeah. <laughs> I love him. Uh, He's the best. And he's just a fountain of information just that, that I didn't know. And I'm like, like he's explaining to me, like I, I was a manager at a video store. I didn't know that, you know, DVDs, they put the name on a certain way so you can see it from an aisle over and all this stuff. And he has it set up so that, that it shines better at Walmart and it's supposed to look good. And he goes, even video stores. I'm like, I didn't know that. I mean, wow. <laughs> He, he's a hit man and knows his stuff big time yeah talking but, to him about movies was kind of like i i for someone who is i guess as young as i am i've always been told i'm i'm kind of like an old soul so i i i know a lot and i am hardly ever um able to be graced with someone's presence that is, they know a lot more than me and like getting to talk with him was like wow I have to write a list of all these freaking underground movies that I have never even heard of. What the fuck is even that one about? Oh my God. And it's in a another language. Okay. Noted. Well, like, uh, he, he, we were talking about video store stuff and about his movies being in move in, in video stores or, uh, you know, and I was sitting there, I was like, yeah. And I, I go, he goes, well, I don't think any of my movies were ever available in Hollywood video. And I'm like, I know they were. And he goes, how? I was like, because I worked there, I bought them <laughs> off the shelf. I own them. They're still in my collection over there somewhere. <laughs> oh my god, I haven't seen a Hollywood video in in in. I think they've been wow, gone. it's and been I, a minute. Yeah, I think they've almost all been gone. Yeah, in like the last ten years, almost all of yeah, them. Yeah, I was a kid because my mom used to work, um, not at Family Video. I think it was Hollywood video and I was a little girl and I would like on snow days and shit, I would have to go like stay with my mom at work. And all I would do is like sit and watch movies. So, I mean, that's been forever. Oh yeah. You're, you're, you're Can you right open there. one up with like a fake Holly, like a fake name, like a, like a different name. Can you open up a video store under like a pseudonym or some shit, whatever the word is. You, you, you could what you should do is be is like hollywood and then sm spell wood as like you would do something instead of <laughs> it's hollywood i love that and that's also a good porn star name Holly oh, yeah. Holly well, definitely would well because that was named after uh kim basinger's character in the movie cool world hollywood I love, she could. 
I love that movie so much. I know that a lot of people don't enjoy it, but I quite do. I, I used to have the T-shirt when that movie came out that said Hollywood if she could. And it had Kim Bas uh, the Hollywood on the front of it. So I'm like envy. I listen, I don't know where everyone finds all these cool fucking shirts, but they need to hook me up. This one, I, it took me forever to find. I get the Hex Girls t-shirt from uh, Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. I love Scooby-Doo and the Witch. Like, that is my favorite. I, and I know that this is probably, people are going to be like, are you fucking kidding me? It's an animated role. But, like, that is my favorite Tim Curry role. And that's because that was the first time I was ever introduced to him as a little girl. I, like, my dad was, like, because I, rem I remember him being, like, you like watching this movie on repeat because yep. you like hearing this guy talk let me show you i think it, what is it called darkness yeah in uh legend yeah darkness yep. legend yes oh my god and i remember watching that and i loved the devil so then he was like let's introduce you to rock and it just like domino effect i kept going him him and and the worst part about it is is when i was a kid when legend came out so i was i was jeez i remember seeing it in the theater so i was maybe junior high maybe and I didn't even realize it was Tim Curry because he's in that full, the devil horns. It's that oh. mouth. I'm so, I, I hyper fixate onto people's mouths. Like I love how people talk and I can, I know it's him by his mouth and his teeth. <laughs> That's how I knew. And his voice, like I just, I just, as a little girl, I immediately knew it was him. When, when he, when he walks out, when he's like, <sighs> His whole big speech with, with uh, you know, uh, there is no light without darkness. Uh, you're just like, oh, damn, dude, you're so awesome. <laughs> dude, he's so freaking cool. Like, I just, what's it like to be so cool, dude? Oh, my God. It's so rad. He, he doesn't even try. He doesn't even seem like he tries. He just, like, I'm just Tim Curry. It. Yes, just, I'm just, it's oh. <laughs> Oh, As kids God. would say, he has riz. He's riz. That, that tells you how old I am. I have no... No, I'm learning new words for <laughs> from all of these, like... Because at the club, um, there's a lot of younger girls, and they say all these words from, like, TikTok, and I'm like, what the fuck does that even mean? Because um, we just said dudes had game when I... what what it's He's got game. What the fuck is riz? What do you need to change? Why are we changing the word? Oh, I, I, I've, I've actually started going back and using old slang just to screw with people. <laughs> I, I, I always say, man, I dig that cat. And they're like, what? <laughs> Looking around, what cat? What cat? This cat over Where's here, cat? man. He's a good dude. What? <laughs> I love that so much. I went backwards instead of forward. I'm, I'm regressing and becoming the old man I actually am. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of like old timey talk more so than the shit that kids say these days because half of it doesn't make any sense. I mean, more power to you. If you guys are developing your own little code language, love that for you, Picasso. Uh, I, however, don't expect me to know what you're saying because I'm never going to learn. I don't know what you're, what this is. I, I, I remember the first time it was like, I need to look that up. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I've done that at work before. Like when I'm talking, like, these 21 year old dudes will come in they'll be like chitter chattering and i'm like how do you spell that what it <laughs> that on urban dictionary was that hold on give me a second i gotta look that up what the fuck is that oh oh that's what that is that's disgusting yeah no okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> Ew, there's a word for that gross <laughs> <laughs> oh my god well it, it, it's bad is that i'm around younger people like a huge chunk of my time running my shop and these guys are like fresh out of high school or you know early college years or whatever and i'm like i'm older than like i'm finding out that i'm like older than their parents and that makes me feel even older <laughs> oh i nothing makes me more uncomfortable than when i'm at work and the young girls like try to flirt with me i'm like <laughs> <laughs> well my wife and I were driving up to Michigan a while back and I was like, they need a club, a strip club that the women are like 30 and 40. <laughs> I like the idea of having, um, so when I danced in Florida, there was a gentleman's club and it was like 
for older gentlemen. I don't remember the exact age, but like you couldn't get in if you were under this age. You had to be this age or older to get into this this establishment. And I loved it. And the girls were like, had to be 21 and up to work there. They didn't hire 18, 19, 20 year olds, which I love because I personally don't think you should be stripping at that young of an age. I think you should give yourself some time. Think about it. Think about it. And then do it or jump right in and do it. I don't care either way, but you know. It's, it's, it's weird. And and I haven't been to a strip club in God. I, I know it's going bad closing in on 20 years. Uh, so. Well, they're definitely a lot different. So if you're, if, if I'm, they're so much different, I'll tell you that right now. It's, the money is different. The girls are different. The dancing is different. The the environments are different. It's just, it's not um, selling a fantasy anymore. Like when I started dancing six years ago, I got into this because it was like, you would do dress up every night and you would like play a role and you would get on like shake your ruler and like bring your glasses down to tell them they've been a naughty boy, you know? Like now it's just girls. Like, I mean, I see girls get up there and they just shake it. It's just like a fucking tambourine and i'm like i can't do that my back hurts i have to dress up i can't twerk see i think that that works more because i mean you can watch any girl you know i hate to say this shake their butt whatever but if you get that fantasy with the you know costume well that's what you're selling with that strip you yes. know a strip club. you're supposed to be selling a fantasy th- to these men you know and and i don't think it i think tiktok and the internet and stuff they've they've like washed it out and like they do this rose-colored romanticization of the job and it's just really going downhill in a lot of places because of that kind of situation so it sucks half the time i can't even get away with wearing cute outfits like that on stage because like there are nights where guys appreciate it but then if you get a group of young guys in there they could literally care less what i have on they care about how fast i can make my butt meat move and I'm like not very fast because I'm a grandmother. Scolios. It, it's it's one of the ones where where, like I said, I I have been one forever. I started asking people it's like because they went to clubs. I'm like, so I'm talking to the guys that come in the shop. I'm like, what kind of music do they play? <laughs> I'm like, because for frankly, I was like, some of the music I hate, I'm old, so it's like it's garbage music, man. Fuck that music. I dance to a hot mix of everything. I have. Uh, TikTok music that has somehow managed to infiltrate my brain and I like it. And then I also have like my anime music and like my music that's in other languages. And then I also have my like music that I prefer to dance to all the time, which is old school stuff. I like to dance to Bush, live, Deftones, um, A Perfect Circle, Nine Inch Nails, all that jazz. I remember listen, going to the clubs and, and uh, uh, lots and lots of Nine Inch Nails was played. Oh, yeah. And uh, um, they're my favorite band. Why am I fucking bull- pulling a blank here? Typo Negative. I danced oh. to so much Typo Negative. And, typo like, Negative that is like, so awesome. Oh, my God. Uh, listen, speaking of Typo Negative, Derek just texted me. And I found out on the set of Triple Xmas that this guy does not like Typo. That's the noise that I made. That's the noise that I made. Thank you. I, I gotta give give him shit. You I fucking love... should. You know what? You should give him shit. I've, Tell I've him seen, I sent you. I've seen him five times in my life, and it, Who, it, Derek or Typo. Typo. Huh? I've I've, I've seen like? him. Did you get to meet him? Did you get no, to smell him? No, I've never got to meet him though. I've stood oh. next to him and like. What do he smell like? sweat <laughs> i don't because uh, he's I so big, but he's like you're like he's what like i six, know seven? I, like, oh my god he's almost a foot taller than me so how <laughs> tall is he will you look it up right now um but now my son my my son joe is 23 and he's he's really in the typo negative now good you raised him right and it's funny he's like man he goes if i could go back he goes there's one band i would love to to, to, and I was like, I, I wish I could I could t- could have took you, bud. I was like, but literally the last time I saw them, he was a baby. So, um, yeah, because Peter Steele died like 
I think I think I was in diapies still. That seems about right. It's um let's see here. But uh, but what was funny is is that when I discovered typo negative of all things, I went and there was a free show here in Dayton, and it was Jackal, typo negative, and Richie Kotzen. I really want to fucking hit you, you know, because like, what's it like to live my dream? I love Jackal. I dance to them all the time. I do not care. She loves my cup. <laughs> I've seen them like four times, I think. I saw them live in a dive bar, I think. Yeah, that was the same night that I... So Brett Michaels did a uh, a charity show in Bucyrus, and it was like a benefit show, and it was him alone, and it was acoustic guitar, but then also Jackal was there. And I only got to see a little bit of it because uh, we had to leave. We had to go. I was like 16 or 17 at the time, and I was dating a guy... And the mom did not really appreciate the sounds of chainsaw. Well, shit. I I went and seen, like I said, saw them. I just saw last year we went to a um, go see Perturbator up in Detroit. And it was Perturbator and Health. But the opening act is, well, I can't remember who the opening band was. But that dude plays a chainsaw too. I love any... If you just, I, something, something about trashy, trashy men like that. I just love them. I don't under, like, Kid Rock is such a piece of shit. Swear to God he is. But when he was doing that ball with the ball phase, little Morgan loved that. I used to ask my dad for the boogie song all the time. I, I just, I've never seen, I've never seen him. Um, Kid I, Rock? Never seen Kid Rock, ever. I don't think that you ever should, because it's just... I mean, if you were ever going to see Kid Rock, you probably should have seen him in the early 2000s when he was doing that rock hip-hop bullshit. Yep, six foot eight. He is just shy as a foot taller than me. So, he is a whole foot and some inches taller than me. You know, the, wow. One of the times I saw him, he was torn with Danzig. So oh, it was literally like, oh my God. Uh, I know that the dynamic is just different, but I bet, you know, you could, I, mm, all right. So we're going to Chinese finger trap. Yeah. Yep. I, and, and, and people look at me now. Cause like I said, the old joke is, uh, what is it? I may be old, but I got to see all the good bands first. Or I got to see all the good bands. And I like that. I've seen Pantera, I've seen Sepultura, I've seen um, Slayer, all these bands that either don't exist anymore or retired or... I saw Slayer and I got riggedy wrecked. I got wrecked. They do not care about gender in their pits at all, which is no. fine because I don't care about gender either. But you got to let me know beforehand. You can't just... I, I had... Oh my God. I had a boot print, like right here, from the from a Slayer pit. I got kicked in the head with a pair of like, it was a heel. I got kicked in the head in the pit, and it was there for like three days. <laughs> and I, it was rough. <laughs> I I don't know if I would have. Well, I have a tiny melon, so I feel like it probably would have killed me. They would have kicked me in the head, and then I would have been just deceased. They, I had a really bad experience in their mosh pit. I don't, I don't really like to mosh. I guess. See, I'm I'm, I'm too old now, because <laughs> if I get injured, it it doesn't it doesn't heal. You're like, if I fucking could, I would. Oh yeah, dude, I'd be in a pit in a heartbeat. I just, I just am not that kind of gal. I don't know. If I okay, so I went into the Coheed and Cambria pit with my mom, which obviously Coheed and Cambria is not that pity, but there was one. Yeah. Believe it or not. And um, I will never forget this ginger guy pushing my mother out of the way to, to get up to the, the bar, like the, the rail. Yeah. yeah. And my mom picked this little dude up with one hand and fucking set him down and was like, like had a hold of him. And she was like, you are not going to fucking do that again, buddy boy. And took pictures of him and shit. Like, oh 
my god i'm not built for this what the fuck well it's funny because my wife we met technically for the first time and we didn't know it at skid row pantera oh that's romantic you guys she make- was in front of in front of me and my buddies <clears throat> and uh we were at hair arena in dayton and they had um they put plywood down on the floor because it had ice underneath it. Oh, and you you would have to sit on that, help. and then they would they would they would get up and they would get behind the barricade and they would tell everybody to get up and everybody lunge forward. So you have to sit there on that ice on that plywood, and I'm sitting there and my butt's starting to hurt because I'm sitting on frozen plywood, and yeah. I go my, I go man my ass hurts. My buddy goes tell everybody. I'm like my ass hurts. And my wife's up front, and she goes, so does ours. That was the first time we technically met. <laughs> we didn't meet again for, so like another, cute. for like another year, almost two years, when she walked into my comic book store. And then it was, from then on, she, she me and her have been together since 1993. So, 30. You guys get me hope. Maybe someday I will find love. She... Maybe. That woman has put up with a level of bullshit that no woman should ever have to put up with. But as as we say, she gets me at my best only because she's had me at my worst. My absolute oh. worst. I was not a good person for years. And she's managed to stick out with me and, and make me a better person. So <laughs> I love Some her death. EPP, I completely get it. I completely understand that. That's really cute. And I love that for you guys oh, and yeah. your little cookies. Yep. And my, my, my puppies are here. We got our four boys and, and that's, what's funny is, is you're, you're talking about how old you are. I'm like, God, you're, you're, I have two boys older than you and two boys younger than you. <laughs> but, uh, I'm at that ripe age where like, I'm not, I'm not young, but I'm not old just yet. Like yeah. when I tell, when I tell <laughs> that come into work that I'm 25, they look me up and down and they're like, Shh. and I'm like, what? Leonardo DiCaprio, what is twenty five too freaking young for you or too old for you? Like I didn't, I thought that maybe you were like younger. Thank you, but uh, rude. I'm not dead yet. Christ, we're not in the eighteen hundreds. We don't live to thirty and then die. You no, dick. Live, live right up to the ripe old age of died in childbirth. <laughs> yeah, fuck's sake, man. What's well, it's like today? I had somebody look at me and they're like, we're talking. They're like. How old are you? I was like, yeah, my birthday's here in a few days. I was like, I'll be 49. And they're like, you're 49? I'm like, yeah, you don't look 49. I'm like, thank you? I was like, <laughs> my my hairline and my gray and my beard tells me otherwise. But yes, I am. Kids are, people are so bad at telling age these days. I'm usually pretty good at it. I wouldn't have guessed 49. I would have guessed like 42. Hey, thank you. I mean, You're very welcome. Yeah. And although I hate to say this, I started taking better care of myself now. So I think I kind of regressed it a little bit. <laughs> hey, and that's a thing. You can you can pick up the slack at any point in your life as long as you're not super old and wrinkly. Well, it's like I looked at a picture of me from a few years ago. My face is all fat and bloated and stuff like that. And I found pictures of me standing up with my kids. I'm like, oh, what the hell happened? And then I'm like, looking, I was like, I ran into somebody I haven't seen in like, I think like three years. And they're like, what happened to the rest of you? I went, what? And they're like, you lost a ton of weight. And I was like, yeah, I work out all the time now. I was like, <laughs> I went from when I first started going to the gym, I was like almost 250. And now I'm setting about 175, 180. And oh, that's a lot of weight loss. Wow. I bust my ass to get one right now. And it's hard when you're almost 50 to lose that much weight. <laughs> Yeah, and your body doesn't recuperate as fast as it did when you were younger. So, like, I'm sure that soreness after a gym workout is a bitch and a half. Well, not not so much anymore because because I've got it. I've got my my yeah. workout figured out and everything else like that. It's when I do shit outside the gym is when I injure myself. Last weekend we had our comic book show here in Piqua, and at the end of the day, I have to load up everything, put it in a van, and then I have to break down all the tables and put them away for the for the for the mall that we were at. So I'm just grabbing tables, flipping them up over my head and throwing them onto the thing. Didn't think nothing about it later on that night. I'm like, oh, I can't move my shoulder. (laughs) I couldn't get comfortable. And then finally I get comfortable 
And uh, I fall asleep on the couch and my wife's like, where were you? And I was like, I was comfortable. I didn't want to move. <laughs> oh my God. When I go back to work after like being gone for a week or whatever, I hurt myself so bad. I, cause I just, I don't, uh, even when I'm working a lot, I don't really do a lot of pole work and outside of work, I don't really do a lot of pole anything cause it's, mm -hmm. it's a job. Mm -hmm. No one brings work home with them really yeah. honestly. And it sucks so bad. I mean, I'll do this one thing. It's called a ballerina and you like whip yourself out and around the pole and you, it's just like, it's so much. And then the next day I can feel it up in like the back of my blades back here. And I want to die. Then I can't lift my arm for three days past like here. So I'm trying to like give dances and be sexy like this, like a T-Rex. <laughs> like, yeah, you like these Roger arms? <laughs> Mount in the full T-Rex inflatable costume. <laughs> Sometimes I forget that I'm at work and I have the Roger arms where like if I'm comfortable and I'm just walking around my house, I'll just walk around like this. Doop, 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 you know and i'll forget that i'm at work sometimes especially if i've like had a few drinks and i'll walk around with my fucking roger arms with my little purse in my hand just would anyone like a dance <laughs> so i i, I have to ask is are the are the strip bar djs still as corny as they used to be back in the day i you you might probably don't even remember so I don't, I'm not sure what they were like back in the day, but um, they still do the whole like, welcome to the stage, the mesmerizing Mina. See, I, I, I DJed <laughs> one night at a strip bar. Legitimately, me and my buddies were just hanging out there, just wasting time. And the one of the dancers and the DJ were dating and they got into a huge fight and the DJ walked out. And oh, our club is so small. Even if that happened, they wouldn't be able to walk out because we don't have enough employees. They'd be stuck working together. <laughs> and it, it, I mean, this dude just walked out. He just, whatever, I'm out. And he stepped out and gone. And we knew a bunch of the people that worked there. And he's like, does anybody know how to DJ? And I'm like, I have. Does and anybody so I'm like, know how to DJ? And, he, and I'm like, I knew how to do all the, you know, the stuff and, and you know, all that. And he's like, you 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 want to work tonight? And I was like, fuck, why not? You know, whatever. And he goes, it, you know, tips, beer, whatever. Yeah. And at that time I was, I was a drinker. I was, a, I was an alcoholic. At uh, that time. Uh, see, so that's like, like, you know, and I'm down, but I'm turned into the, the, the stereotypical strip bar DJ at the time. So I was like, hello, let's welcome Cheyenne to the main stage while Cherokee takes the, yeah, and I turned into that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they all sound like that. That has never changed. It's, that has it's, never that's changed. Literally how, and, and when they bring us all out, like, so in bigger clubs, especially in Florida, they did this thing that I like to call a cattle call, which is where we would all line up behind the curtain and then they would be like all right gentlemen we've got a two for whatever dance special pick your girl and you like had to walk out and you had to like flip your hair and fucking flirt with them and then you had to walk down and go around on the floor and find a guy it's it's it was if i could just go to work and not have them do that that'd be great i i, I mean i hate to say this but i couldn't imagine a strip bar in florida Oh, it was phenomenal. And I say that with heavy sarcasm. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Florida is not my favorite state. I, Florida and Texas are my two states that I am just not big on. My wife keeps trying to talk to me. I was like, nah, I could go the rest of my life and never step foot in Florida and I'd totally be fine with that. I did a month and a half of being down there when I was in a really bad relationship and I stripped to survive, to take care of him and myself. And it was hot and sticky and i mean people are just, i mean the, just as, as a woman i would not recommend stripping in florida the men are a different breed of nasty like i've never been assaulted so much in my life honestly than when i danced in florida like the majority of my trauma comes from florida clubs Jeez, like it's bad and i had girls in probably two weeks ago or something some girl was coming in and applying and she was like, yeah, I used to live in Florida and we dance there and it's like not nude and all this other shit. And I look, I like, I have, I wheeze laugh. I laughed like that, the Muttley guy that like, <laughs> that. <laughs> cause like, I like, I was like, are you, 
what part of Florida did you dance in, ding dong? Or were you just disassociated the whole time? Like, you didn't putsy out everywhere. I want to know where she worked because I want to I want to know why I didn't apply there. <laughs> well, it was a whole different world, like I said, back when I went. And, and legitimately, one of my best friends worked the front desk at a strip bar in Troy. And he was during the day they had a the the, the toy shop in the front and then the, the bar in the back. And at six o'clock, then they would open up the, the strip club and then you know you had to go through there. Yeah. Well, I was there so much because I was the my buddy's ride almost every day. So I'd pick him up from work, take him home, or we worked together at Hollywood video where I'd pick him up and then we would go back to work. And so I got to know all the girls that worked there. I got to know the owners. I mean, I, I've legitimately went to a New Year's Eve party for the guys that own Diamonds in Dayton. Oh, I was going to dance. So I danced in Dayton and I danced at Lust. I don't even know where that is anymore. Um, it's, it has like big purple lights. I know the only two that I know still exist are diamonds and cheeks. Are the only I two don't that say. Oh, hold on now. It might have been. I might. It might have been cheeks, and I'm thinking of lust in Toledo. But oh my god, we. I I got to know, but we 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 got invited to their New Year's Eve party. So it's like me and my wife and my buddy, and we're there, and it's like they they pull up and they're like. We can, we can, we're going to valet park your car. And I'm like, I'm driving up in a piece of shit minivan. They're parking freaking Ferraris and all these nice cars. And I'm like, oh, dude, um, so my car's shady. So when you put the key in, you turn the key, hit the button under the steering column and the car will start. <laughs> I love the cat behind you. Which one? The, the it's it's um um above the comic book yes that thing yeah. right there. yep I've been watching that's why I leaned in really close and I made a face because I was watching it swat something that's Maisie that's my that's Mazakine yeah. that's my cat she's on the show right now honestly she's she's great she's she's my cat my wife's cat is Lucy and she's around here somewhere that's my cat is Mazakine and her cat is Lucy Purr. So. I follow a um, haunt actress that has the name Lucy. It's Lucy Fur, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And she worked at um, Haunted Hoochie. I don't know if she still does anymore after all the shit that went down there. But last I saw, she um, was a Haunted Hoochie, like, frequent actor. And she was on the cover of, like, Fangoria and shit. Really cool chick. Damn. I've, I've heard the name online. But, yeah, all because we were watching the TV show Lucifer when we got our cats. <laughs> so that's I love how that. That's hard. I, 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 that's one of my favorite shows. I legit own one piece of screen worn costume from Lucifer. My mom is going to want to smell it. It's not, it's not his. It's not, oh, any, never mind. It's, okay. it's, um, the zombie wedding episode that starts out with the wedding where they're all dressed yeah. up like zombies. There's a girl in the audience. She's wearing a white dress and it's, she's on. I have the dress that she's wearing. Oh, I love that. So it's 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 all framed up and, and up at my shop, which I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put it now because it's it's kind of big and heavy. So but I own a piece of for Lucifer television series. That's that's my that's thing. Awesome. So and although I, I my friends went up and met uh uh Tom up in uh Michigan up at Motor City Con, and I was like, is he cool? And they're like, why is it, dude? Because I, I don't think I would have it in me if I found out he was a dick. So <laughs> I try not to ask people that anymore because I found out about quite a few of my like super, super favorites. And yeah, it's like really disheartening to find out your heroes are actually assholes. I wouldn't say assholes. I guess peculiar on what kind of things you talk about with them. Yeah, because I'm a friend of mine. Um, works for Shutter now. He um, he's a friend. He knows Derek too. Um, he I asked him one day because he he's the one that that got Bone Tomahawk for art for them. And I was like, he met Kurt Russell. I'm like, is Kurt Russell cool? And I was like, I was like, if he's cool, say yes. If he's not, just say I'd rather not talk about it. And I'm like, 
man, I don't know if I would be able to find out Kurt Russell was a dick. <laughs> I think I would be okay because if he was mean to me, I'd still like it. <laughs> I'd be like anything you say. Yes. God bless. You're beautiful. <laughs> have mercy. Oh my God, that would be that would be me if I would if I would have got to meet Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher could have told me I was the biggest piece of shit ever, and I'd be like, okay, I am. Thank she you. would spit on me, and I would say thank you. <laughs> Uh, it was we, we had the discussion that le- legitimately I joke or I tell my wife, I was like, there's only one woman there. You're number one. And number two was Carrie Fisher. <laughs> She's probably like, you know what? Honestly, same. My list is the same. Yeah. So I was like, I've, I've been I've been in love with Carrie Fisher my entire life. And that's not even a remote. I think every nerdy boy from the 80s loves Carrie Fisher it's kind of um it's kind of a staple given oh yeah and, and the funny don't part like Carrie Fisher I ask what's wrong with him I'm like mm, well, it, a it, killer or something I bet people are like well she got kind of fat and I'm like I don't care I don't care that's Carrie Fisher Fuck what the awesome. hell is wrong with people she got kind of fat well you know what buddy your hairline is at the half court right now so like maybe you ought yeah, not be talking fucking bald bullshit I know what it's like I know what it's like <laughs> I, that's the first thing I go for when guys try to say stuff like that. I'm like, your hairline is talking a lot louder than you are and you need to stop. But Carrie Fisher was one of the ones though. We, we, I didn't even know I was little, little, I was like three when I first saw star Wars and then four is when they brought the reissue back in 78. And I was a kid and I didn't even know. And I was already in love with this woman. I mean, I was like, She's the best thing ever. You know, it's like <laughs> that's me and Bruce Campbell. I've yep. just mm, since awesome. <laughs> since I was in diapers, I've been watching The Evil Dead. And I love that movie. I love that man. But he's married. I I just scored the Groovy collection the other day. Somebody brought it in the shop. So I have oh. the Groovy collection. But it's Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, and then uh uh Ash versus Evil Dead. See, I want to own all of Ash vs. Evil Dead. I have everything except for that. See, Actually, I have, I have the first bit of Ash vs. Evil Dead, but I would like to have it all. I got the really nice box set. I'm getting ready to sell my extra Blu-rays and stuff, but I only have season one of Ash vs. Evil Dead. So I don't even have yeah. I don't have anything that plays Blu-rays. I am old school. I have a DVD player that plays all of my weird hentai that I order from Japan. See, I have I have one of those, but mine also plays Blu-rays. <laughs> mine doesn't play Blu-rays. Mine just makes sure that my porn plays. Because I watch weird uh, uh, one anime that doesn't come out here in America right away. Uh, two uh, horror movies that are out of print in the United States. You can still get them over Europe for like next to nothing. Yep. Um, I bought my wife uh, Ghost Town, and if you were to buy the American Blu-ray of it, it's like 200 bucks. But you can buy like the exact same Blu-ray with the exact same stuff on it from England for 20 bucks. Yeah. And I'm like... That's how it is for a lot of anime and stuff. Um, I'm in a lot of like forums and stuff. I like chat with people and use my wily woman ways to get um, people to send me stuff from overseas shit that I like would never be able to find over here. And they're always like, it didn't even cost me anything. The shipping cost me more than getting the actual product. And I'm like, what's it like, bud? Because over here, that ship's like $500 without the shipping. So. Well, I'm, I'm, I hate to say this. I'm milking, trying, I talked to this uh, um, one fan on my uh, Saturday morning cereal show. She lives over in the Netherlands. And so I'm always looking for uh, like the European release of toys or like comic books and stuff. And I, I grew up, I love the Marvel Secret Wars figures. They're super basic, but there were these, they, you know, they had the black suit Spider-Man, all that shit before anything yeah. else. Wolverine. Well, they have three figures that were only available in Europe. And that's uh, Electro, Iceman, and Constrictor. And I had to sell mine off when I was a little kid because my mom, you know, was like, we're moving. And I was like, oh, I got to sell my shit. So I'm tired. She's like, oh, I think I can find one. Those are cheap around here. And I'm like, Probably because you're in Europe and they're not going to Oh my God, I would have been like, get me three and I'll give you money right now. I need one to open, two to keep. <laughs> and uh, I did have somebody send me their Robotech collection. 
So I have some Robotech toys that they just sent me. God, I'm like, they're awesome. awesome. So. <laughs> Sorry. I have a wonky, um, wonky little, little, there we go. Ring light. Oh, see, so if anyone's watching this and they want to replace my ring light, have an Amazon wish list and a new one is on there. Please God help me. I got, I got my patrons. I'm like, I was like, Hey guys, I need a new computer. <laughs> and so they're I'm, a new ring light. It's not even a computer. I couldn't yeah. imagine. The, they, they bought me this chair. They uh, would be like, can you put something larger than your toy in your ass? Or we're not getting you a laptop. And I'd be like, well, it looks like I'm not getting a laptop. So <laughs> no, I bet so, you don't have to show your taint for your little gaming chair there, buddy. That's true. I don't yeah. have to show nothing. Yeah. I, I'm not gonna lie, man. I couldn't imagine trying to, to do all that. I mean, because I couldn't I imagine how crafty those nudes would be because I'm sure they'd be funny. Oh, yeah. And, oh my God. I couldn't. <laughs> I know how creepy guys can be. That's the worst part. I was like, I, I couldn't. Oh, they would, they would, you would be like, I, if I was gay, I would just, I would just be straight. <laughs> <laughs> oh they're terrible why are they saying these things to me <laughs> women are just as bad though let me tell you they're just they wait a little <laughs> while longer they get you in and then they hit you with the wild shit like let me pee on you and i'm like wait wait a minute whoa <laughs> oh my god what wait a minute how hot is she wait a minute what <laughs> well like you know sometimes you got to dig through the profile pictures a little bit and then if it's reasonable i might consider well, oh my God, I'm at uh, Comic Con. I'm at Gem City Comic Con. A few years back, God, it's more than a few years now. I'm dressed up as as Red Hood from Batman. So I have the mask on. I got the jacket, the 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 Batman, the, the hoodie. I've got all you know the guns and everything you know on. You can't see anything. I mean, literally, my beard is braided up and and tucked inside of a a. a that is a kink, by the way. Just letting you know that this everything you're describing right now is a is a category on Pornhub but continue yeah and I'm walking by and I, I this woman just reaches down and just grabs a big handful of my butt and here's the thing I don't have a butt I have, was, I'm, I'm a flat uh, ass I, I'm the first <laughs> one to admit it and she just went boom she goes I gotta get a piece of that and I turned around I was like the hell and and I was like, you don't even know what I look like underneath this. I said, I could be a complete freaking troll underneath this. And you're just like, I'm like, I could have went <sighs> and been like, you know. You should have, uh, you should have done that and been like, this is my strong hand. <laughs> oh, but, no, consent is so important. I'm so glad you said butt though, because I thought you were going to say a handful of your dick. And I was going to be like, you punched nope, her, right? Nobody's done that yet not not doing that nobody's and the worst part about it is is that last year i took my youngest son trick-or-treating i did full spider-man that is the skin tight suit and i'm not i'm f kind of fit but i got the the, the, the waist thing on so my yeah how dare you leave the house dressed like a whore and expect people to not sexualize you bro the fuck <laughs> is wrong with you come on the worst part about it is i couldn't see shit the eyeballs <laughs> that thing are like this big. So I'm like walking around. I'm like literally holding on to my wife. Everybody wants their picture taken. Everybody. I'm like walking around taking pictures with little kids I can barely see. And then I have adults. Like, can I get a picture? I'm like, yeah, all right, man. Here we go. I'm like, I, I don't like. I don't like people. So I would have, that's my biggest fear about going to cons and stuff is like, I'm going to dress up and people are going to see me and they're going to be like, Bulma! And I'm gonna be like, oh, no, it's not Bulma. Huh. You, I went, one of my favorite animes is Sorcerer Hunters. Love that anime. And the, the, the anime is different than the manga, but they do have the one anime that is closer to the manga than the rest of the anime. And we were at Ohio Con and forever ago and there's a girl and she is um chocolate so she's just got the suspenders glued to her nipples so that it doesn't fluctuate anywhere and she's walking around the convention and i'm like you are a brave 
brave girl because there are some creepy fucking dudes here. oh my god i would I, when i went to horror conventions like uh horror around and shit i make a note like if i i don't i'll dress cute sometimes if i'm going with like a man in the group but if i'm going with like when i went with my mom to meet richard brake no makeup nothing too scantily clad tennis shoes in case i gotta run because men will my biggest thing is like men will look at me and i can tell when they realize who i am and where they know me from and that's when it becomes an issue because i'm like now you're gonna follow me around because you're too scared to ask me like my name and if it's really me which like in actuality it's less creepy for you to come up to me and be like oh my god i love i love your work i love watching like your content whatever the fuck it is that you like want to say to me that you're too shy to say yeah and it makes me so uncomfortable because they just like they'll just stare at me like like I'm, it, it's it's like a lion watching its prey like i know the thoughts that are going through your mind i am definitely not dumb and like the thoughts that are going through my mind equal in violence kind of but opposite spectrum opposite ends of the spectrum murder Oh man, like I said, it, it's it's bad. Is I didn't, I never realized how bad it was for women. So I hate to say it's relatively recently. I just, I don't have any daughters. I don't, you know. Yeah. And you know, my wife's a pretty tough girl. She takes care of herself. Never any issues, whatever. Um, but I worked out at the Planet Fitness here in town, and I would go late at night. So legitimately, I was there from like 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock in the morning or 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the morning because I'd do it in the middle of the night when there's nobody there. Yeah. And I started having these ladies come up and go, hey, can you walk me to my car? And I'm like, yeah, why not? Whatever. So I'd walk them to their car and stuff and and never paid a bit of attention. And one of the girls worked there. She goes, she goes I just want to say thank you. You guys, you're, you're, you know, you're helping us out. And I'm like, mm, it's fine. And she goes, people, girls don't like to walk out because the the lights don't work in the parking lot and i went what i had to go outside because i had never paid attention that the lights didn't work and my wife looks at me she goes that's something women look at that the lights don't work and she goes you got to feel good about yourself she goes because these women trusted you enough to ask you to walk them to their car even though you're just the dude they're working out at night yeah well they have we have no other uh, that's why i don't work out at night and that's also why i don't work out in public and if i ever worked out in public i would go with someone else because i watched a video of this fucking woman working out at night and she like let this guy in and she thought it was a guy that was coming in to work out and it was a guy coming in to fucking rape her well, so, and there's video footage of their five minute fucking ordeal where she's like running around fucking playing linebacker trying to fucking get around him i've seen like, it yeah ass and i'm like that is that is our reality and nothing irks me more than when people are like well men have it bad too i could i could probably if if someone said that to me and set me in the middle of like a group of these people take them out like rambo in a blind rage i mean i i just it is the anger that i feel when people try to make comparisons like that is exponential i just can't because it is not the same no you guys no. do not have the same level of fear that we have and you never fucking will nope. so like to say that life is so hard for men is like baffling to me like please could you be any more of a fucking pick me like oh shit I, I i've said this a thousand times i was like i'm glad i'm a dude i was like one is is that i don't want to put a whole lot into dealing with this every day so but I was like, man, I would not want to be a woman. There's no way I don't want to. No, it fucking with sucks. I mean, granted, yeah. like, there's a lot of things that, you know, we have that women didn't have back in 1960s or whatever. Yes, we've made pro progress. Yeah. But um, the things that we should really be making progress in, we have not made any at all. None. Huh. There is, hmm. like, the gender equality is so ass backwards, it's not even funny. Like, it's, and it's been pushed by both ends. To the point where it's like non-existent like the level of fear that we have now as women existing is it, it's not even equivalent to how it was in the 60s i mean think about all the women that don't have rights to their bodies like have to cross state lines in case like if something happens mm -hmm. you know like it's just it's in and the amount of men that like i had a situation with someone that um 
I'm going to leave out. Uh, but we were walking out of a cultural festival and there was a guy talking, uh, like having people like sign petitions and he was pro-choice, which I am very pro-choice. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, women's rights. And, um, this person looked this guy up and down and he is a man and looked this guy up and down and was like, no, nah, man, that's not really my thing. I don't not I'm good. And I just like my opinion of that person entirely changed in that moment in time, because how are you going to tell me that you don't care about me? Like that affects that literally directly affects me. Oh yeah. Well, and it... you don't care. What? Just say you don't love me. You know, like that's exactly what that is. You don't. Ah, see, I, you know, and, and so because we don't know. It's like, it's like, I know I don't have any daughters, all sons, all four boys. I have nieces. I'm close to, I have, friends of the family that I am really close with their kids and I love them to death. You know, I love them as much as I love my, I love my yeah. nieces and nephews and I worry about them every day. And it's, I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't definitely, no, that's bullshit. Women, women's rights, women's rights, man. Screw that. I have no yeah. right to tell anybody that. I mean, shit, I'm married and I, my wife's like you. Yep. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and it's 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 crazy the amount of people that just it's. I think I've I've come to the realization that ninety nine point nine 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 et cetera, uh, percent of the population is literally soulless and evil. We like they just walk around taking, and never giving. And it's like, you're allowed to be your main character of your life in your movie, because that's, we are, we are yeah. all are our own main characters, but like to be such a draining and greedy, like person, I just can't, I just can't imagine, like, I just, the evil and the meanness and how like shitty people are these days is like wild to me. See, I don't know. It, well, it's funny is, is that month, was it Tuesday? Wednesday, Wednesday, I went and uh, we raised money at our con and we always give it to the food bank. And yeah, they're more of a religious food bank, but they helped me out when I was broke. We I mean, food there. banks help people no matter. I'm not yeah. going to be they're Christian or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And um, I walked in there and we'd raise like a hundred bucks. And I think it was like $98 and some change. So I walked in and I just had this handful of money and I was like, I was like, can I talk to the manager? And she's like, yeah. And the guy comes out and he's like, what is it? I was like, here. And I just hand him the money and he goes, do you, do you need a picture? Do you want something? Like, no, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm just yeah. here to, to, to pass forward. And, yeah, and the only time there's any good that's done is if it's like for social media presentation, yeah, which drew me that. in. Insane. I, I say that as I do this on social, as I do this on thing. No, but no, no, you're like telling me the only reason yeah. it's on social media is because we're having a conversation. Yeah. Like, the and, only and reason I, I just donate and leave. I don't, I don't need any notification. I don't need any glory. I'm just like, here you go. There you go. Buy yeah. what you need. I'm out. I do stuff for people and they're like, do you want to take a picture? I'm like, no, I just want you to take this and leave. Because I'm socially awkward and I'm an introvert and it's already taking me a lot to be here right now. Not that it's your fault. I'm not saying it is, but I'm just saying, take the Prezi and go. Yep. And it's so funny that you are uh, a socially awkward introvert because you are very open and brutally honest and <laughs> and, and you're everywhere in, in movies all the time and you're... I get my I get my peopling via sets and um, you know like photo shoots that I randomly sometimes do or whatever. Like ninety nine percent of my time is spent in this room right here, <laughs> or am room next uh, in the in the next room. Um, I just I whenever I'm around people that I um, am not acquainted with, you know, I am forever reminded as to why I stay alone. Honestly, yeah. just people are just so shitty anymore. It just blows me away. I I see and I and, and the thing is people I like to I mean I I am dumb for all intents and purposes, but sometimes I put on a dumb act. And um it's because I like to see how people act around me. 
And I like to see how things like change. And I like to, you know, once they trust you, they really start to show their true colors. And then I'm like, I, it's like every time I let that happen, I'm constantly disappointed because I'm like, oh, you're another snake. Look at that. Oh my <laughs> God. Wow. Who would have thunk it? It, it, it is because, I mean, that's that's everybody. I mean, I've had really people that I, I've had people I was friends with my, since we were kids. And they took me down a horrible path when we got older. <laughs> that lose you? No, sorry. I was reading a text message from oh, okay. um from Derek. Yeah, please be sure to give him all of the shit. Yes, I will give him all kinds of shit. Yeah. Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can be real about it. I can't give him too much shit. He he's he got me some cool stuff, so I can't. <laughs> Yes, you can. You can do it. He's fine. It'll be fine. It's good for his character development. Oh, he he's he's such a cool dude. I mean, I I it's funny because I I we have mutual friends, and I used to know him from Fye, and uh -huh. oh my god, my dad used to take me to Fye so much as a kid. <laughs> uh, I can like, smell it right now. Our our Fye is gone. The closest That's one's all the way down in Dayton. And now I have to order all my weird movies and records and shit offline because I don't feel like driving. Yeah, and but I mean, my dad's always been that way. I We always do the online versus the in person. You never find anything that you really like in person anyway around here, so. Well, I get, I get bored. I'm like, man, I was like, I want this album. And if I don't go to, I hate to say, if I don't go to a concert where I buy a lot of my vinyl at is I buy it directly from them. And now it's like, Oh, I got to order it offline. And oh, so like, you're a concert junkie too. Yes. Yeah. See y'all be liking all these people. You like these crowds with these people and the yellings and the bass in the ears. And wah, wah. I can't do that shit. The, uh, I'm going to go to, was it the last, last show I went to was, nightclub at smalls in detroit no that already sounds like detroit you lost me I, well you it's lost. not even in detroit it's in it's in hamtramck which is north of detroit so huh and um i went and seen perturbator at l club in detroit in a few weeks i'm going to take my wife to go see stevie nicks in louisville kentucky Oh, uh, I easily in most overhead storage bins. You won't even know I'm there. <laughs> like, oh my god! Just walk you in in a bag and just in a little in a little animal carry on. I fit those little bubble backpacks. I swear to God, I'll be able to breathe out of the hole. You won't even know I'm. <laughs> the the and the worst part about it is they're not even great seats, and they're still worth stupid expense. <laughs> Be fucking nicks. Of course, you're paying an arm and a leg to see her. And and it's funny because I bought, I got tickets to three concerts for me, my buddies, one of my buddies, my kid, and a couple of them I didn't get. I only got two tickets to, but the three concerts I got multiple tickets to were still cheaper than the two tickets <laughs> that it cost for me to go take her to see Stevie Nicks. So and it, it would have been worse if we would have went and seen them in Columbus because that was with Billy Joel. They would have been twice as much for That's that. That's where my mom's friend, um, my mom's friend that works in her salon went to go see her was when she was with Billy Joel in Columbus. And um, I like don't remember the exact number that I was hearing, but the number that I heard made me like clutch my pearls. I was like, oh dear God. Two tickets. Four hundred bucks. was 390 yeah, she bought was like 400 for one i think it was like yeah, that'd be about right a yeah. lot of money and I, I the only time i'd pay that is if you brought peter Steele back from the dead the, like yeah the, 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 if, if you built time machines and took let me go back to concerts i wanted to go to that's about the only way i want to spend that kind of money Oh my God. Oh my God. I would just, I would be a much happier person. I can tell you that much right now. I'd also be a very well known groupie. <laughs> I, I, 
I've been, and, I was, and I was front row for all, all the concerts I went to. I was guardrail. There they were. Um, I, I want to see, um, I know it's bad because it's not even Peter Steele, but I, want, I wanted to see a pale horse named Death, which was the guys from Typo Negative's band afterwards, which I really liked. But There's another uh, band that they put together that's called Silver Tomb or some shit like that. Yeah. Never saw Carnivore, never saw any of their post typo bands, but I got to yeah, see not, let me let me tell you, it's not any, I didn't like any of the post typo because it's not Peter. It's not his voice. Yes. Never the same. Oh my god. I've been I've been uh uh I wanna I don't wanna be me has been stuck in my head for like a month. Now. I, oh, that fucking music video is a treasure. It is a national treasure and Dan Fogler is awesome. <laughs> Oh my god, there were so many cameos in that fucking, in that video that I was just like, wow. My, my, uh, you know where he put it, my, my bass is around here somewhere, but my, my son Vince, he won't let me play it because he wants me to, to, you know, finger pick. And I, I was sitting there, I was like, you're playing like a, you know, strumming. And I was playing the opening, it was like, I don't want to be me. And I was like, Vince is like, no! Do this. I'm like, I can't do that with this song. I gotta like this. <laughs> the, the, and I, I practice every once in a while because I, I um one of my favorite bands of all time is Anthrax. And I finally got to meet Scott and Frankie. I met Joey Belladonna a few years back, but I finally got to meet Scott and Frankie. Anthrax. So is this the band that had the the, the beard? Yeah. The guy that had the beard. Yeah, because, uh... What's the singer's name? Scott Ian. Okay. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 this shit's stuck in here. Okay, here we go. Right here. Oh, my Pantera is the band that did that the... That guy is Scott Ian. Thing. And, like, as soon as I had... As soon as you said I enjoy... Like, you, you enjoy Pantera, that is the, the... The beard connection is what I made. And I was like, of course you do. Yep. I've seen Pantera... I've seen Pantera, like, eight times. And, There's uh, a guy at that that song called what it walk walk yeah i what have to dance that sometimes in the fucking club and i've never been so angry at a band that i've never really listened to but i every time it comes on i want to just like fight that man i'm like why did you make this song every white trash guy around here loves it and i have to shake ass to it why that just seems a weird fucking song to play. Dude, okay, I got... they request that stuff i'm telling you it's, i know it's, so it's a mansfield thing they have a weird palette around here i just don't understand well, what was real bad was uh um I like Prince. I don't, oh, I love Prince. I, will I love dance Prince. Prince all night. And I found out that the strip clubs around here at one time would you could not play Pussy Control. I danced to Pussy Control all the time. I love that song. No, and I'm like sitting there like what? One of the, one of the best stories is my wife. She was driving down the road. This kid's riding his bicycle, and he's probably. 10 11 years old and he's just singing pussy control as loud as he can going down the street and my wife is like that's one of the best things ever so he's like this little kid's like pussy control and he's riding his bicycle i'm like <laughs> i was like that I would make you want to have a kid for sure i would see that and be like you know what i kind of changed my mind maybe <laughs> maybe i want to breathe a little i don't know that's so fucking cute. I, I I've never had anything like that. But one day we were sitting there, and I had um I had a convertible Camaro at the time. So I'm driving around with the top down. My kids are in the car with me. We're stopped at a stoplight, and we're listening to Queen. So we're listening to "Don't Stop Me," you know, can't "Don't Stop Me Now," and we're singing it as just just right along with it. And then like a few days later, somebody comes in the shop, and they're like, "Yeah," and they're like, "Um," so I was driving down the road. And I hear Queen as loud as can be. And then I roll up and realize it's you and your kids singing Queen at the top of your lungs. And went, yep. <laughs> I was like, because my kids rock. My kids are awesome. So <laughs> I bet my dad would have been a little prouder if I would have requested a Queen song, but it was always Kid Rock, Ball with the Ball. Ball with the ball, the bang, the bang, the bang. I don't know why I was so into that song, but I'm telling you, man, all the time I would be like, play the boogie song, play the boogie song. I, 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 I do have one Kid Rock story, and it's 
kind of I'm, I'm adjacent to this story. We go up and we have fam. My wife's got family that lives up in Michigan and she's got family that lives in Detroit. And we're in Brighton, Michigan, which is about 40 minutes outside of Detroit, give or take. And her uncle is getting his hot dogs at World Famous. So we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting. And it's like two hours later on a 35, 40 minute drive. We're like, what the hell's taking so long? Pretty soon her uncle pulls up and he's mad. And he's like, Doctor, and we're like, what's going on? He's like, Kid Rock showed up. They shut everything down, let him get his hot dogs. And then he got his shit. And then they started everything back up and he left. And I'm like, what? And he shows, he turns his camera around and there's Kid Rock walking past him because they, they, they made everybody else stop. They let him walk past everybody in line, get his stuff and then leave. And of course, everybody's like, ah, oh, Kid Rock. So everybody's like bothered. So that makes everything late. So literally. You know how mad I would have been if that white trash hot, he, that hot, hmm, I, he, oh, come between me and my food and your music is that bad at oh. all. But that's, that's oh. our, that's our, that's our Kid Rock story is that he, he was. He ought to be freaking ashamed of himself. He is not even that freaking cool to be acting like that. See, but here's the worst part. I've talked to people that went there and, like, the guys from, like, ICP showed up. And what did they do? They bought hot dogs for everybody. Do you know the love that I have for ICP? Like, it is so real. I love those guys. I love them. I, I love them. I, I'm not I'm not a fan of their music. I, I, I joke around with my friends that are Juggalos. I give them shit. I'm not going to lie. I give them crap. But here's the thing. I have respect for those guys because one is they give back to the city of detroit constantly they give back to all these organizations they give back to all this stuff i can still make fun of them because people make fun of me for my music i don't care so i give my friend shit my one friend has toured with them and i will still give him shit oh and, that's so cool and uh yeah he's uh he he was he just did um, a thing with a thing called Camp Zool here, and he is one of the ones that helps puts it on. But yeah, he's there. I've seen pictures of him with the guys from Twisted, the guys from ICP, and would love to meet and work with Violin J and Shaggy Two Dope. Actually, one of my favorite movies is the Western that they did with a bunch of the other guys from their Psychopathic Records. And I can't remember what it's called. It's like big, some big, big uh, money, big money rustlers. rustlers. Yes! Oh my god, we came, we came together, and we at the same time. That is such, that is such a good. Why is it so funny and good? I don't understand, but I love it. Actually, I would love to fucking find that on DVD and have that. I just, I haven't. I used to have big money hustlers, the first one. And I don't know whatever happened to that. I don't know if I loaned it out and never got it back or whatever. But uh, my whole thing was was uh, it got given to me because I like the Misfits and the Misfits are in it. They're in the bar in the beginning. Yeah. Of the yeah. And uh, somebody gave it to me because I like the Misfits. And um, but yeah, no, no, I give I give my friend shit all the time. I, I, I okay. <laughs> shit for it all the time too like i told someone on a set one time that like i genuinely enjoy listening to icp and head pe and they were like really and i was like yeah really i really like head pe that man's voice is so fucking awesome i can't i cannot i love i guess um my two favorite genres would have to be like trailer park rock and fucking sex metal which is like two of the most made fun of oh genre. I mean, I like they fucking anymore. dog them so much for no reason, and and um, screamo. Like I like Broken Side a lot. I I actually follow them and and want to go see them. I, their new music's not that great, but I have hopes that they'll play the old stuff from when I was a kid. But anyway, I actually really like their music, and people cannot stand that shit. And it and they're like mean about it, and I'm like, God damn, you guys. We we just had the conversation. Me and my son we were driving back from the con about these bands that get shit on because you know one they got famous and it was uh the one i like to make fun of even though i will give them all the credit in the world is nickelback yeah nickelback, i listen to 
Nickelback too. It's okay. The Nickelback is a garage band bar band that somehow made it big. They really are. And more power to them. The fact that they were able to become Nickelback is insane. Yeah. And I mean, is their musicianship great? No. Is their songs catchy? Yes. You know, yeah. are they poppy? Yes. But you know what? I'll give them all the credit in the world. I mean, I listen to dumb shit that no one's ever heard of. And then <laughs> I will say that if I had to pick between them and the guy that does that, that, that weird tongue thing, that, that shit, I would pick the tongue guy over Nickelback any day. <laughs> Just say, I'm not, I'm not super, I have to dance to them too and work a lot. And I've only, if I had just my personal hell is a strip club that is empty playing Nickelback and Metallica on repeat. See, I couldn't imagine going to a strip club and listening to Metallica. Some girl. Oh my God. That's all I've ever had to listen to for the last six years working at Top Hat. The one manager is literally obsessed with Metallica and it's like, I just I could I'd rather dance to Guar. I I think I've actually had a girl dance to Guar. I would I like and I'll just tell you I I'd could. rather dance to Guar. Honestly, I love Guar. Oh, I've, oh God, I love Guar. I've hung I've out never, with those guys. I could hold a rhythm. I could never hold a rhythm to it. But if I had to pick between the two, I would pick Guar every day. See, it's Cradle not- of Filth. I've been digging through my personal stuff because there is a picture of me in full odorous costume. That is amazing. Did you have the the cuttlefish? Yes. There's. I'm legitimately holding the big. Yeah, you have to have the cuttlefish, or you're not doing it right. And uh, and it was worst part about it because it was a um, weird one off costume. He goes, yeah. He goes, I decided to try to make my right arm a tentacle. So the right arm is is weirdly shaped, and it becomes a tent. But rest in fucking power, man. You are. He was so fucking awesome, dude. Oh I, my god. I hung out with those. Well, it was funny because it started out with um, I was doing a comic book show in the early '90s in Columbus, and I had I had just seen War like three days before, so I had my War uh, t shirt on, and. Um, can't remember what, what, what it's like uh it's it's looks like it's war is cut into your chest oh, and um oh. i'm sitting there and this dude sat next to me and he had some war comics and he goes you like war and i was like yeah and i was like no. so i bought the comics he had he goes he goes he goes i got somebody who's going to want to meet you later he's coming by and i'm like okay and he's telling me he's like yeah he goes i was war's to one of their tour managers and shit like that i'm like yeah, yeah okay sure dude whatever you know i hear that bullshit all the time and pretty soon this dude walks in and he walks over and he puts his hands on the table and he looks at me he goes like your shirt he goes i heard you want to talk to me and i went what he goes uh you talk to whatever over there and i'm like yeah and he goes hi i'm dave and i'm like because i'm odorous i'm like the fuck you are (laughs) oh my god i would have melted into the floor so i i talked to him at that con then he used to do uh guar used to do motor city con all the time and then i would always talk to him there because i went to motor city twice a year hung out with them bullshitted with them went and seen him play at at, uh, harpo's in detroit and shit um and i i that's when i was sitting there because they were they had because we're, we're, I'm hanging out with them at their booth and they had their costumes all put in crates and it goes and they start pulling off so I'm like wearing like the, the beefcake helmet and I'm wearing the ball sack trap jaw and stuff and I'm sitting there and there's this part of this face looking out of the box at me and he's like that's the odorous costume and I'm like sitting there I'm like hell yeah he goes you want to wear it and I'm like yeah and I'm oh like, my God. one of the grossest stinkiest things you will ever touched me ever and i worked on a pig farm so <laughs> it was so gross uh, but it was it was he goes is odorous yeah and it, he goes he goes oh. usually he goes we have to dump the shoes out because and they weigh a ton because it's all foam latex so it's all got all that shit absorbed into it and it's it was so bad but i'm literally i have the shoulder pads on i have the gauntlets i have the mask on i don't have it glued on so I would uh, have maybe oh. passed on the mask strictly because 
I don't know that I, I just anyway. I made so, about anything, everything but the smelly mask. So I had um I had a really nice set of vampire fangs at one point. I had my mom worked at the dentist office, so I had these really nice actual denture fangs. And so I have them in, and I have the mask on. I have the the, the horns, you know. I have the shoulder pads. I have the big. And I have the big sword and the whole nine yards. And there's a picture of me, and I'm literally standing with the sword one hand and the other. And I cannot find it's a Polaroid. That's the worst part about it. Because this is before Oh, I love Hold this on. before everybody had a camera on their phone. Yeah. But that so made is... money. <laughs> so but now I'm supposed to hook up with Don and them. I'm I'm gonna try to bring them to our show up here and in Ohio sometime so oh that'll be cool I'm sure that I will hear about that yep and uh he said he's got a con coming up so we'll find out if they're going to be close again and I'll just travel over and hang out with yeah. them Don's a blast I I and it, it's nice being able to I hate to say this talk to somebody that's maybe older than me that knows what the hell I'm talking about <laughs> No, it's okay because sometimes I talk to people and I'm like, wow, why did I even open my mouth? Like, what was the point? I, I just, oh, I give. We were talking anime at the shop the other day and I was like, oh yeah, one of my favorite animes is, is uh, I love Bubblegum Crisis, Tokyo 2040 and the Bubblegum Crisis. Of course, Dragon Ball Z and all that stuff and a lot of the Gundams. And I was like, bow. And it was like, what's bow? What do you mean with bow i was like you know what jojo's bizarre yeah i know what jojo's bizarre adventure is i'm like it's what he made before he made jojo's bizarre adventure <laughs> i was like i legit have it on laser disc and vhs tape because it's as far as it goes <laughs> i thought i got kind of sad when like i actually i get i get sad whenever people like watch reboot anime and they think it's like an original and if they don't understand that it's been a reboot like there's two right now that are really big it's um Baki the Grappler and oh, yeah. Hunter, 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 Baki, Hunter, whatever it is. Yep. And so Baki was like originally released like late 80s, early 90s, yep. I'm pretty sure. And um, it what we have now is nothing in comparison to no. the fun original at all. Like no, I, the way I, that Baki's dad is presented is not even remotely the same as it was when it was originally done. Like people don't talk about the fact that Baki's dad was literally pegging dudes in prison because like he literally just could. Like that was one of his things. One of the things that his dad was known for was fucking opponents because he fucking could. Like yep. kids don't know though. No. See I got shit like this. See, my dad would probably like cry. That, that is a a opening uh, for a bunch of different animes from Japan from the seventies. Don't open that. I, well, it's already been opened. It's it's that's how I got it. Ah uh, no no ah. Uh. But then I got shit like ah. Uh, this is the one. Yeah, there we go. Ah. Uh. Yeah. See. I would flip my fucking lid right now, but, like, my dad has so much Akira shit that I think that if you and him talked, you'd probably like my dad more than you like me. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. I love, I love Akira. That's, that's, yeah. my, might be the first anime movie I've ever, I ever saw was, was Akira. I will take a photo of the theater poster that my dad acquired from the original, like, like, the, the release of Akira, because, he was, I think, a teen when that came out. I don't fucking remember. But um, it's worth a lot, and it was a lot when he got it. And that's his, like, prized possession, and it's hanging up in his house. So one one of these days when I go over, I'll take a photo and show you. Yeah. I, I would show you. I have uh, I have a friend who hooks me up with uh, old movie posters. So legitimately, mm -hmm. this whole, my whole area down here, uh, I have the original Transformers movie poster from the 80s. I have Heavy Metal. You got me. Dad has that one, and I wish that he would just give it to me now. The heavy metal one? Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Of heavy metal. I have heavy metal. Uh, it's alive again, which is it's alive too. I, I know. Have the Eliminators. I, love that. I have Deathstalker three, Swords of the Barbarians. I have Deadly Blessings. Uh, 
Oh, prom night three. I have shit that people. <laughs> I have a very very expensive house poster. Which this one? is my my just the original house. Oh okay. Yeah, that's yep. I love that movie. Yep. Oh my god, that is probably I mean, the movie. Oh, that's from a theater. Open nationwide. They yeah. did it, um uh fucking. Night of the Living Dead, but um, so when my mom was like cleaning out this old theater for a guy, that was one of the things that was from the, like they put it up to like display that that movie was playing at the theater. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm not entirely sure how old it is, but I know that it's actually like it's it's older than me. No, definitely because it would be so, that was the, the so eighty six, I believe. It had yeah, because yeah. well, it's the it's yeah, it had yeah. to have been. because but, yeah, that's my that's one of my other babies. I get, I guess I'm not sure about the Army of Darkness poster. I think my dad got that from someone that like got it from a theater release, like when it first released. But I'm not, I'm not sure. My um, we were digging through my old posters because I still have all my old posters from when I was a kid. So I have my original like Hellraiser three poster. I have all these original posters from when I was a kid and I'm going through there and my buddy's like, do you want to sell that? I was like, no, 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 no. Do you want to sell that? See, that's the kind of person that I am too, though. I would see that and I'd be like, so do you want to give that to me? I'll give you money. The the one he really wants more than anything is, is that um, when I was a teenager, of course, I had a huge crush on Christina Applegate from Married with Children. And so I have her the old school original Christina Applegate posters. And I oh, started. yeah. Every and boy like, in the 80s had one of them fucking things. And now he's like, do you want to sell those? I'm like, no, those are the original ones. I was like, it's bad now. I know I'm old because I stopped having a crush on Christina Applegate and I have a crush on Katie Seagal. So... <laughs> well, I didn't have a crush on Kate. No, like I didn't even start with Christina Applegate. It went straight to Katie Seagal. Yeah. I love her. Peg Bundy, Peg Bundy. And then when she became the mom on, on uh, Sons of Anarchy, she got even badasser. Oh my god, Gemma Teller was such a babe. Uh, I That show was literally nothing but eye candy. And I, <laughs> thank I've, you. Kurt Sutter really knows what he's doing. You know the worst part about it? I've never finished watching Sons of Anarchy because of one what? person. Oh. I was watching it religiously every week. I worked third shift. So I left to go to work and I would record the show and I would come home and I would watch it the next day when DVR. Yeah. And I left and went to work and I come in and one of the girls, we would talk about Sons of Anarchy and stuff like that. And she walks up to me, she grabs me, she goes, I can't believe they killed Opie. And I went, I was at work last night. I didn't get to see it. And I was so mad. I've never watched it again. Opie's death made me stop watching it for about a month. Because I, 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 like, I get, if, if I, if you catch me and, and they loop me in right at the beginning, right when everything is developing and I have to follow that story and I get attached, I get attached. Like it's mm -hmm. like they're real. And like when they killed him off, I, I was distraught. Oh my fucking god. But then um I like found a new love and you would be surprised it was Tig. I've met Tig. I've met him. Oh and... my god. Met Where? Tig. Uh at a motorcycle show. Him and um Juice, the bald guy. I don't even know. Both of them. I don't even and care the best, about The best part about it is I'm sitting there talking to him. And I go, man, I was like, I almost brought my copy of Waterworld for you to sign. He goes, oh, dude, I would have loved to sign. I was like, it was my VHS. He goes, you have a VHS copy of Waterworld? I went, yeah. He goes, oh, fuck, I got to sign the shit out of that. <laughs> God. I, I, don't, what, I don't know what it is about, like, creepy old men. But they really, he really, they really get me. I just, I have a running theme here. I love Tig a lot. I, I, I Opie was always the, um, I guess, stand in for the the audience. He, I always felt like that. And when they killed him off, I thought, oh, how the fuck are they going to keep this show going? Because he was your because avatar. Woman 
that was watching that show was not watching it for fucking Opie right away. We all started watching that shit for Jax. I don't care what any woman says. You did not start watching that shit for the plot. It's like reading a Playboy for the story. No, you didn't. You watched it because you watched that preview of him shirtless, running around with all that. Mm. That's why you watched it. I just... Well... It, it's funny going back because he was Charlie Hunnan was was listed on the next year at the motorcycle show we were going to go to. And they're like, yeah, we're bringing him in. And then I found out because he, he canceled. So people went out and they found him. And he's like, I was never, ever doing that show. He goes, they oh. lied to you. And I was like, oh, fuck. OK. But now freaking Opie's at like all these shows now. But I never I never got to meet him. Opie is, Opie is, I liked, I liked, I, he's not, I uh, I don't know. I I have my own opinions. I think he's just a pretty face. I don't think he's that great of an actor. Well, you know, because what he went from that to the one where he played the kind of hillbilly guy. The Walking Dead. No, well, yeah, no, because there was a show between. I don't know what show it was between it, but I remember him playing the guy in The Walking Dead, and I was not impressed at I'm not gonna all. Lie. I've never gotten past season three of Walking Dead. I, um, so I, I bit the bullet and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna fucking watch this. I'm gonna, I am gonna power through this. And my treat for doing this is getting to see Norman Reedus in the episodes that he's in, because, uh honestly and he carries that show if that if they kill him off which i don't think they ever will at this point because no, he's getting funny. his own show now yeah it's funny because he wasn't even a fucking character in the comics no they originally wrote him into the script to kill him kill him off yeah and because of the merle dynamic that was going on they had it was like it was like to pull at the heartstring type of deal but then they got such a fucking strong positive reaction to him that they were like, we can't, we have to keep him. And then it just got more and more and more. And now half half of the fucking United States is watching The Walking Dead for Daryl Dixon. I've hung out and with Norman Reedus at Horror Hound. I met him at Horror Hound before he was in The Walking Dead, before it was like fucking hundreds of dollars to meet Yeah, yeah, podcast. legitimately, this was Columbus like 11 years ago. Oh, so, this is probably when I went. Yeah, he was hanging outside and he's like, he comes up to me. He's like, "Hey, man, you got a lighter?" And I'm like, "I'm like, no, nah, I don't have my light." I was like, "I don't have my lighter." I was like, "I can run back to my van and get it." He's like, "Man," he goes, "He goes, can you do that?" I was like, "Yeah." And we end up standing there talking for a few minutes. This other guy comes up because I got a lighter, so we just end up bullshitting with him for a while. And he's like, "Hey, thanks, guys. Talk to you later." Went about her day. <laughs> so that was my 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 Norman Rita story. No. When I met him when I was 16, that's exactly what I sounded like. I couldn't speak the words. <laughs> and I probably still, I'm 25 years old. And if that man, this, no, go, go on. I know. It's a rough life being a cat. Um, and if I got to, if I got the chance to like afford to be able to meet him and talk with him again, it would still be, my mom would still have to talk for me. She'd still have to be like, her name is Morgan. She really loves your work. That's what she's trying to tell you. Oh my God. What I, I uh, there, there, there's been one person that I legitimately could not bring myself to talk to because little kid Paul freaked out. So nine-year-old little kid version of me wouldn't let full-grown adult me go talk to this person. I was at a comic, I was at a comic and toy show. I had a table here. There's a table between me here and there's a table over here. And it's legitimately a woman named Morgan Lofton. She is the voice of the Baroness from the original GI Joe cartoons. Oh, I had the biggest crush at nine years old on the Baroness. Oh, your poor little, your poor inner little kid was just screaming. Oh, man. I'm sitting yeah. there and I would, I would like, all right, I'm going to get up and talk to her. And then the, the Baroness voice would come out from the side. I'm like, nope, I'm going to sit back down. Oh, I can't do this. I can't. <laughs> like, I can't. I That's was, so precious. I couldn't do it. I was like, oh my God. This is, I, I barely spoke 
could break. It's okay. I still, I don't, it's all right. People get an <laughs> By meeting people like that I, that's why I made the post the next time I see him I'm gonna ask him questions because the first time I was like he's touching me oh my god he's touching me ah, what do I do well years ago I got to meet Claudia Christian she's now on 911 she was on Babylon 5 she was in the movie The Hidden and I had I thought she was hot I still think she's hot and um we, I was gone to a several conventions that she had to either cancel or they, you know, found out they never actually booked her and stuff like that. Finally, go to Chicago. I'm at Chicago Comic Con and I walk up, I'm past everybody else. I get up to her and I'm like, and my wife's like, Hi, his name's Paul. He's here to talk to you. And yeah, I'm like, fuck, my mom does that. Doesn't it make you feel like a fucking ding dong when that shit happens? Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. Yes. Thank you. And I, I finally broke and I was talking to her. Skip a few years. We're at Dragon Con in Atlanta. And I'm down there. Tina's waiting to talk to, to she's getting in line for James Marshall's from Buffy and, and stuff like that. And I'm standing in line for, for Claudia and I'm sitting there and she looks up and she's like, Oh my God, I haven't seen you since Chicago. And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, and she's like, Oh my God. She goes, can I use the restroom real quick? I'll be right back. And I'm like, yeah, go, go, go ahead. So I'm just, I'm just chilling. She goes off, comes back. She signs everything I have. Doesn't ask any. And at the time she had her playboy, but she wasn't signing her playboy. Cause she kind of, I guess she kind of wanted to get away from it. Yeah. And so she signed her Playboy. She signed all the, the cause I just grabbed some shit, threw it in my bag and was like, ah, she, you know, whatever. She signs everything, doesn't charge me. She gets up, gives me a big hug and a kiss. And she's like, well, you, go ahead and find me later. And I'm like, oh, you know, I was like, we're going to be around the convention the entire weekend, blah, blah, blah. And so anytime I come by, I'd high five her, say hi, whatever. And, uh, but I'm sitting there, I get this whole big treatment. The guy standing behind me walks up. She, he hands her whatever, and she's like, thank you. And then and the guy just looks at me, and I'm like, <laughs> and you would have just, the guy was like, did you score that? And my, my wife's like, yeah, you can thank me for that, by the way. Yeah, yeah, your wife is the best wingman ever, and you're welcome. I love her. My, well, what's really funny was she was in line for James Marshall. Well, his band was performing that night at, at, at oh. Dragon Con. We're, I, had, I had press passes because I had a public access show at the time. Oh, there you go. And um, so I'm, we're in the back. We're in the backstage and stuff. And we're talking to all these people. And I'm standing there, and James is up on this platform, and I'm talking to him. And me and him are just bullshitting while my wife's talking with some other people. And my wife turns around and says, who's she talking to? And I was, I'm talking to James. And I go like this, and she looks up, and James is like, like this, and he's looking down at her. And she's like, oh, oh. I would have done. That was her crush at the time, man. She, she almost couldn't talk when she finally met him. But it's it's that was back when you could actually talk to guests and 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 it wasn't like their security people would walk you off and shit. So I think I got it. There you go. No, don't fall over. Um. I, oh my god, that was her her thing, and uh, that was mine. Is I got to meet Claudia because of her, and she remembered me, and then um, I got to, got her to say hi to to James outside of standing in line because I was talking to him. Just, just talking to him like you know we're talking right now and that was all that was it but now then this year i went to uh horror hound we're eating and we're walking out and i'm talking to this kid behind me i'm not paying a bit of attention to who this kid is at all right and we're sitting he's like hey, hey having a good time yeah fuck yeah it's been fun blah 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 blah, blah. you know this, this. and he walks off and i walk off these people go what did he say and i went what is this dude and they're like that's zolo from from uh karate kid and, or uh, cobra kai and blue beetle and i'm like okay and they're like what were you guys talking about i was like i don't know the weather <laughs> when a lot of people talk about other celebrities that they meet especially when people like that go to a lot of cons and stuff yeah. you know like they're talking about all these people i have not a fucking clue who 99 percent of them are i'm not going to lie to you it, especially if i don't see their fucking face yeah 
So like when people are saying their names, I'm just like, yeah, I don't know who that guy is. Sounds really great. He just said hello to me, asked me what time it was and dipped. Like I, I don't, I don't, I, 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 people mistake it for humbleness, but it's really actually me just kind of being like absolutely fucking stupid. Like, I just don't know. I'm like, no, it's actually, I just don't know. I didn't know. I would have been excited if you would have told me if I'd have known, I would have jumped up and down, but I just didn't know. It, it, now it's it's bad because you, you're, you're going to conventions as talent now. And, and I've been finally, I've been invited to conventions as talent, which is weird for me because I'm like, well, who the fuck am I? I'm nobody important. And yet they're like, here's your table. Here's your booth. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm going to sit here for an entire weekend with no merchandise, no nothing. And then I just talk to everybody. So I end up hanging out. I went to um, Virginia last year and I ended up hanging out with the Hellra guys from Hellraiser. So I'm legitimately just hanging out with two of the guys that did special effects and the, the pinhead in the last Hellraiser movie. Not to... I know a lot of normal people would be super excited about that and like it is really cool but like I would not be I, it would just be I would be like I would just be talking to them that's just it we just talked the entire like, weekend about dumb shit like it about just going to concerts and stuff and like, they're just they're just to me now at this point you're all just people and like I've actually had instances where I've worked with like bigger build names that get kind of upset because I didn't like have a fucking meltdown because I'm working with them or like I'm on the set with them and like I didn't like shove myself up their ass and I'm like isn't this kind of what you would want like a normal experience from people on a set you don't I mean if, if I ever get to that point I would want a normal experience on the set I don't want people just like <gasps> oh my god my photo on my phone my laptop my ipad my fucking let me get a photo on my like nano like i mean just everything that you could have a photo on like everything it just wouldn't you want some like peace homie see that's what i liked about the dudes i hung out with all that weekend because it was legitimately i like i said i hung out with gary tonicliffe who did special effects makeups for shit ton of movies um mike regan who a special effects guy he's chatterer pinhead in a bunch of our chatterer cinnabite in a bunch yeah. of the hellraiser movies and then paul taylor who was pinhead in the last uh dimensions films um hellraiser and we're just sitting there and me and him are talking anime did you look at did you look at him and say why did you do that <laughs> no i it took i told him i was like you did far better than the guy before you the one wait so judgment. is there other one that i'm there's, missing out there's on revelations the and judgment well which one was the one that sucked revelations that's the bad one that's the one that um hey did that, that come out around the same time that the friday the 13th and the nightmare on elm street remakes came out do you remember those with like jerry yes. yeah hold on a second the, the, hold on, there it is i know i had it floating around here somewhere oh shit is this mitch with the sideways there we go this is Gary's character in Hellraiser Judgment. That's he's the one that directed remember, it. Okay, yeah. he's in the that's the last dimension film one. That's actually not bad given the fact that they only had like a stupid small budget. Um, but he told me that the revelations that was one of the ones they threw together, I think it said in seven days, and it was just to keep the rights. So they basically they made that they already had the makeup for Doug. And they just went, throw it on that guy. And they put Doug's makeup on another dude. So he's got a, a thick face where Doug and Paul both have gaunt faces, which, you know, so the makeup works better on him. Um, I was told that the entire budget for special effects was like five grand. And they, they, the guys that were working for Gary at the time wanted the Hellraiser on their, you know, their resume so they worked slept in their trailer and worked essentially for free just so they could work on a hellraiser movie with no budget and all this stuff like that and you're like oh man it sucks and he goes you know what he goes these guys wanted to do it so they did it just so they could have that and i'm like i don't know I'm but of... Doug bradley isn't even that's Doug my Bradley. thing i would any opportunity like that would be such an honor 
obviously, but I'm not going to like distress myself if I'm not going to get to work with the people that are, I truly want to work with that are a part of those things. Like I would, I would not stress myself out if I was doing the freaking fri- uh, nightmare on Elm street remake with that guy that, that he looks like a damn it's, it's, I just, I can't. The worst part about no. it is I like Jackie Earl Haley, the guy who played Freddy Krueger. He played I don't know Orson. if he's ever been in aside from that movie. And I can tell you that it was one of the few movies that I, as a teenager, I felt the urge to get up out of the theater and fucking leave. I think I seen it to drive in. So I watched that one and then something else after that. Through the screen, my God. Oh, it, it's, it's irritating because... I think it had potential to be great. Jackie Earl Haley's great. He's the one that played Rorschach in the Watchmen movie. Um, and I know this is bad. Go back and you can, he's a he was a child actor. He was in the original Bad News Bears. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> um, he played awesome. the tough kid. He played the, the 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 tough kid, even though he's only like five foot tall. He's still I love like, that. Oh my god, I haven't watched that movie in so long. Yep. Holy shit. I just I just rewatched them all the other a while back just because I could because they were on HBO and I'm like what I didn't watch these since I was a kid then I watched the first two and went to watch the one where they go to Japan and I only got about halfway through it because I could not watch it because it's legit it's legitimately one of the worst movies you ever seen. There are some movies that are just like that where it's like when they made the like that live action duck movie. The live what action. Is- it's it's a lot. It's got like a live action duck in it, and there's Howard like the a whole duck? with the duck. Howard the Duck. Yeah, I love Howard the Duck because it's yeah. Insane. You can love that all you want, but that was uncomfortable to watch. That was oh like, yeah, it's it, it's fucking that wrong. was like whole world in reversal. Like because yeah. you had you had a uh, 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 um Leah Thompson hooking up with a duck man. Yeah, so I can't tell you. I I I don't think that I could have done. I I, I well, so actually, I could have. As an actress, I could have done that. Watching it as an audience member was uncomfortable, but oh, I could totally make a fake duck. I guess. I, I'm gonna tell you. This, this this is how old I am. I saw that shit in the theater when it first came out. <laughs> did Did you hear me? What? No. Don't let Brad Twig hear me say what I just said because. Oh, no do it there you go so brad if you're watching this you need <laughs> yeah the next movie needs to be about ducks on crack cocaine ducks on crack. i love that mm-hmm. all ducks really went downhill over the years quack. they're they're hooked on quack they're hooked on quack the qu- brad oh my god we found it we found the next movie quack quack crack quack quack crack <laughs> Oh, geez. The everything on drugs thing is so fun right now because now they're doing uh, meth gators, cocaine sharks, raccoon. Uh, cocaine bear was fun. I'm not gonna lie. That was a dumbass movie. I didn't anticipate it to blow up the way that it did. I mean, it's got like 200 and some thousand views. Yeah, that that was funny because, like I said, when you, when I when you guys. Noel has it. I've Unilad did it. Like I just so many. I, it's everywhere. It's on TikTok now. Mm-hmm. So you hashtag Crackoon on Twitter. The posts are freaking insane. Like it's it's gained quite a bit of traction, and I am so proud of Lil Brad Twig and our crack cocaine movie. Oh shit! I knew what I was going to tell you. Shit. So I have to because we were talking about you know sex metal and all that stuff like that i paid for the perk for scream dreams to be on the album cover of one of the ones that she's looking at and (laughs) we're doing one i'm going to do my wife does photoshop she's really good all so we're gonna go i have my camaro i have an 82 camaro outside so I'm going to have the base. I'm going to be shirtless, my leather jacket, torn up pants. I wish I still had the bullet belt, but we're going to do the beard so it won't be gray. So we're going to do that, put the headband on. Where Where do you live again? Where do I live again? Piqua, Ohio. You're, you're Mansfield. You're... Yeah. How far are you from me? Huh? How far is that? I'm not good with directions, so you need to just tell me how far you are from me. Uh, You're probably about two hours away from me. I have 
bullet belt that I can send you that I was going to use for Waspzilla. And it's like a man bullet belt. That's why I can yeah. fit it. It's so like, if you want it so that you can have it. Yes. I would love that. Yeah. That would be awesome. It's too big for me. I'm never going to be able to wear it with anything. I only got it for that role. And then I ended up having to fly and there's no way TSA would have let that shit oh, through. No. Because well, if, if there was a plastic, like, like plastic, you could feel like what yeah. I use Waspzilla, it would be fine. They would have been like, oh, it's just a child's toy, whatever. It scanned it. It would have been cool. But the ones that I have that I'll give to you are fucking metal. And they feel it's heavy and it feels real, but it's not. It's from Hot Topic. See, the worst part about it is, is uh, um, I want to say the first time I saw Slayer, I went to see Slayer in like 92. So I had on the the gauntlets i had the big yeah that, and that is such a silly thing to wear to a slayer concert because <laughs> oh my god every time you hit someone you're hurting yourself bro well the worst part about it is one of them i had made so this thing has studs sticking out of it probably about that far and i think i loaned it out for halloween and never got it back but i had the bullet belt leather pants the, the <laughs> Just watched um, Lords of Chaos, and that's all I can think of right now. When you talk about the spikes and the gauntlets and things, is Rory Culkin um, and beautiful face and that god awful movie. That movie was so bad. I, but I, I, I've, it, I love it. I have not been able to bring myself to watch it because I, I, I love the book. I have the book over there, Lords of Chaos. I've watched uh, until the was until the darkness uh, comes or whatever the documentary. And I haven't been able to bring myself to watch the, the the Lords of Chaos movie yet. If you are a Rory Culkin fan, then you will enjoy this movie because it's kind of like watching anything Evan Peters does. I could watch him breathe for two hours and I'd pay money for it. So I was in Indianapolis. Um... If you tell me that you met Evan Peters, I'm probably going to get off of this call right now. <laughs> well, then I'll stop then. What the fuck, bruh? Oh my god. Do you understand? I, I, it was just passing. It was like because hey. I was I had bought um a booth while I was there. So Were I was him? Huh? Yeah. Were you Yeah, he was in the back where we were cutting through and I was loading my vehicle up. He was back there hanging out with Maisie Williams and uh from Game of Thrones, and it was him. And it took me a minute to realize who it was because you know. You don't think about it when you're just walking by a guy in the back of a convention. No, you do. You do. You do. When, when, when you, you do, but you're you. So yeah, you didn't think about it. That's okay. Yeah. Cause, cause you know, I like him in, in the mm -hmm. uh, American horror story. I like him in X-Men and I didn't pay attention and I'm literally loading up a van. So I'm just walking past these two and they're, they're people. And all of a sudden I realized I'm like, and he's like, what you doing? I was like, ah, you know, I just, I bought a bunch of stuff. And he's like, ah, I just wonder why you're cutting through here and blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah. And I was like, I, I got to get it loaded up my van so that I can get out of here before, you know, we're, we, he was just asking me while I was there. And, and I was like, man, I was like, then I realized who it was. And I was like, you got to take a break. He's like, I have to take a break. He goes, there are just too many fucking people. <laughs> and I he, have. He, um. He was, he was cool. I mean, I, like I said, it was just one of them little, like, couple Achoo. little things that moved on. The, uh, yeah, those little things. You just move on. You just fucking, you just casually walk by. Now, like, when I say that I'm pretty calm about a lot of things, that is one of the things that I would not have been calm about. I probably would. I just, so I, My phone number. I would have given it to him. Those were the words I was trying to find. But no, he was he was a cool, dude. I mean, I just I mean I was... Was. fuck you for living my dream, dude. I hate you so much. <laughs> God bless you. I had I had to buy three thousand dollars worth of comic books to load them up my van that day to go through the back area, but I did. Although I had to ask Maisie Williams how old she was. I'm like, God, how old are you? And I was like, I know you're like almost like an adult right and I was like because you look I mean and she I think she was 17 at the time and I was like you know I was like that's going to either work for you forever because you're going to be you know look young forever 
or it's going to work against you because no one's going to be able to take you for more than the little girl. And I was like, I don't be yeah. rude or nothing, but you know, and I was like, she's like, no, <laughs> she was like, kind of worry about that. So. <laughs> Cause there's nothing quite like being like continually cast as a child. I get the old, you got a baby face, but like from the neck down, you can tell that you're an adult thing going for me. And yeah. um, I like quite enjoy it. <laughs> but she, both of them were in the back. Just yeah. If, I would have known who that was instantly. And I would have been like, <laughs> you to blow the comic books up on your own because I'm going to need about 15 minutes alone with him, please. And the worst part about it is you got to see me. I was trying to load all this shit in the van and they're just standing out on the dock, just watching me. Like, <laughs> Oh my God. I would have bent over to pick so many things up. Oh no. <laughs> I struck a box of comic books again. Let me just bend over and pick them up. Ooh. The the uh, the other cool person I met that was really cool was the kid that played Bruce Wayne on the TV show Gotham. Ah, oh, that's so cool. It was funny because we my buddy went to go meet um uh uh Captain Jack from uh um why am I drawing a blank on his name from uh, Doctor Who? And we could they they had already cut the line off, and we got there like early, and they're like, no, nope, no more people. So oh. we're standing there, and uh, we're we're sitting there talking, and um, the the management was like, would you like to talk to, you know? And I was like, yeah. And we're like sitting there talking to him, and he just comes over and starts hanging out with us, and he's like, you oh, don't understand. Cool. He goes, I'm talking to adults. He goes, oh, I've been talking to his teenage girls all day. And I was like, I was like, oh, that must be hard. He goes, just don't get me wrong. He goes, it's nice. He goes, but it's nice to have a conversation with people that aren't freaking out because they're standing next to me. Yeah, I, I like, bet that's really annoying. I couldn't imagine. That would be insane. Just, I mean. I, I, just tons of, I know what I was like as a teenage girl. I was wild as fuck. I mean. Granted, I couldn't talk to him once I got to them, but like, I mean, beforehand, it was like, <laughs> you know, a nice, super nice kid. I mean, I'm good for him. I hope that he is that nice all the way through adulthood. Yeah, because I, I, I looked at him. I was like, you know what? The force part about it is, is I didn't know he was in um, the TV show with uh, um, where he played an autistic kid with uh, Kiefer Sutherland. And I didn't realize it until my wife was watching it one day. I was like, hey, it's Bruce Wayne. And she goes, yeah. She goes, I was like, I was like, hey, I have an autistic son. I was like, and my my wife says, you did a great job on this show portraying someone with autism. And he's like, thank you. He's like, no one ever talks to me about that show. And I was like, no, you don't understand. I was like, I have a son with autism. I was like, so, you know, you're, you're kicking butt with that. And, uh, you know, he thanked us for talking with him and we went on our way but super cool little dude so oh. well, that's but, cool i yeah. um i i'm gonna have to get off here in a couple of minutes because we've been on here for almost two hours yeah i was just getting ready to say yeah. the same thing I'm, my wife's probably like i need to go to bed i gotta get i'm gonna yeah. work i'm like i don't i don't want to be at work till two <laughs> and then well, like, I, do boss. So I, do I, I do what i want i do have to i do have to get off at some All right. point well, you have a good night, and it's great talking to you again. Um, when's your movie? When's 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 your movies dropping? You know. Okay, so let's do that really fast. Yes. Um, just finished Waspzilla and Killer Kong. Um, Brad's pretty quick with like editing and stuff. Uh, I'm not. I don't have a release date though yet. Um, I'll ask him tonight, and then maybe you can like put it in the caption comments or something. Yeah, we, can, not... we can do something. Yeah. Um. And then I have Lust Magic and the Witch's Sabbath, and that is running an Indiegogo right now. I'm going to be getting to work with Ari Lehman, which, if you know who that is, yep. um, I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Um, like, really freaking, I'm very, I'm, I'm actually way more excited about it than I'm letting on, but I'm like, you know, I'm being cool about it. Um, I think that's going to be filming in August, so I'm really excited. Um, next month, I have my Donald Farmer movie, which was originally Demon Queen 2, and then now it is Blood Bitch Baby. I'm very excited for that. Um, 
I don't know if there are any more that are going to be coming out. Crackoon, I'm not sure when that's going to be coming out. Wrestle Massacre 2 will be filming at some point in late summer, early fall. And I get to work with Naya White, and that's really exciting because, like, I love her um, her work. I'm really excited to get to watch Curse of the Were Deer. Uh, yeah, I'm. I love her. She's. I mean, Shakespeare shitstormed. I mean, she's just the stories that I've heard from other people about, like her, at, like how she is on set and how she like is like does like she full sends it brother and i love people like that because i'm a full send kind of bitch too you know if i do my own stunt work and all that other stuff even if i don't really quite know what's going on i'm gonna do it anyway because i want it to look good and i have fun while doing it even though it hurts the next like week i have so many bruises on my body from waspzilla because i did a little bit of my own stunt work hold on let's see there's gotta be there's gotta be some more. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is for your views. For your views. Dude. <laughs> you see that? Yes. How the hell did you do that? And then there's a big scratch right there from a tree branch. I feel like there's more. I just don't know. I don't remember where they all are, but this one is like my best. This one is my juiciest. This is my baby. Um. So there's a scene where I... In the script, it says Waspzilla hits Sheriff Callahan with its tail and throws her up against a tree. And I was like, so when I saw it in my head, what I'm imagining is like kind of that scene when Jason puts the bitch in the sleeping bag and is like, yep. you know, and I was like, I want to do that. But I want to do that with my body outside of a sleeping bag. I want it to just mm, right against the tree like a body would yeah. if it got a big wasp. You know, uh, but we don't have the cables that they usually attach. There's not so that, you know, you get the speed of the pool. So I'm raw dogging it. So um, what we did was is I did it so that I like two stepped in front of Angel. And then as soon as I got done two stepping, I was like, here's the tree. And I was like this far away from the tree. I literally like caught a little bit of momentum. And then I like turned and threw myself into it. So I as hard as I could, <laughs> broke the prop gun, um, and myself, but I'm sure it looks fan-fucking-tabulous. <laughs> Stop hurting yourself! Listen, I got a talking to from Brad, I got a talking to from Angel, I got a talking to from quite a few people, because they were like, that is that is not good for your body. And I was like, uh, no shit. But like, if we don't do that, then like, what are we going to do? Well, and art is I supposed to be dangerous. Try, still hurt. Yep. So it's, it's like, I'm either way. Let me just do it. Let me get it done. So yeah, that was really fun. Um, let's see. What else do I have? Give me just a second because there's quite a bit going on and I'm kind of slow. All right. Friday the 13th, The Awakening, the full movie is going to be filming, but I'm not sure when. I think he wants to do it in the fall, um, where I'm going to be playing Ash Williams, which I'm really excited to get to elaborate more on that character, because um, after doing Deputy Sheriff Callahan, I got to be, like, really ridiculous and over the top with, like, a lot of the shit I was doing. It's mm-hmm. I'm, I, He's very obnoxious towards the end. I have a lot of, like, Rambo moments. It's a lot. Um, so I feel like I'll be really able to channel my inner, like, Ash, so I'm Mm -hmm. real excited to get to film that. That has an Indiegogo running right now, too, finishing funds. Um, let's see. Wrestle Massacre 2 does have an Indiegogo as well, not to backtrack, but I wanted to make sure to point that out. And I think Crackoon's Indiegogo is finished, but it might not be. It might still be up. Um see here blood bitch baby doesn't have an indiegogo yet i'm sure brett or i'm sure um donald will do one though so yeah, when he does, yep. yeah i'll let you know um i'll, I'll ask him on wednesday <laughs> yeah yeah see i i really would i would ask him because um i'm not he might have already said he was and i just don't remember because my brain is literally in a billion different places <laughs> um I think that that's it. I have stuff in the works, but like, and like, I would love to talk about it. I'm just not sure if I'm allowed to. Understand. Oh, I want to share this with everybody, though. Can I turn my camera around? 
Hmm. I can't. Let's see if I can just... Do you see what I see here? The sneaky cat? You see that thing? Yep. She's... Every night, she lays there and watches me. Look at her. She knows she's so cute. Mine is all chill there, and mine is chill there. There's just like mine. Yep. And that is so cute. I also love that you have a dog named Lulu, because my dad has a Frenchie named Lulu. Um, and I like don't remember what he named her after, but I like to say that he named her after the shitty Metallic album with Lou Reed. That's a horrible album. So no, this this one was uh, uh, when, when we got her. Uh, her name was Lucy. Well, we already oh. had cat Lucy, so we had to tweak the name a little bit. And so it was Lou, Lulu, and now she answers to Lulu. So this is still Lucy. Her name's still Lucy, but we call her Lulu. So that's cute. And she's that's my little fat corgi. She's my little fat. <laughs> so. She's fat. She's not little, that's for sure. Come here. Do you want to show everyone your size? Yes. Oh, here. Lulu, come here. Come here, come baby. Come, come here. Baby. Tell everyone how large you are. Oh. Such a big cat. Oh! Oh my god, just like I... Stop it. That dog is chubby. This is my, this is my baby. Oh. He's right, Kofi. Yes, I love you. Very unhappy. Oh, your breath stinks. Oh, you stinky breath. I am I am a I am a sucker when it comes to dogs and cats. I turn into such a this is my baby. <laughs> yeah, this is my baby right here. This thing. This is it. Here we go. Hold on. Come here, Maze. Come here, Maisie. Oh, Daisy, you're about to nope, that she's like, nope, nope, not dealing with that. So all right. Yeah, this one's pretty passive. She hey, that's my boob. Don't show people that. Quit. <laughs> so well. I got to get going because I can hear my kid tromping up and down the steps. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Go see what the child is doing. Yes. I got to see what he's getting into. And then I'm going to chill out. Um, this will not probably drop tomorrow because I have an episode that will drop tomorrow. It will drop the, the next Monday. Okay. Um, tomorrow, ironically enough, will probably be my first episode that I've ever had to put a disclaimer at the beginning of it. <laughs> Why? Uh, who did you? Who is it? It's me, doctor, a uh, guy named Dr. Zombo, and a Mikey, Mikey Severe. So I think I did a podcast with Dr. Zombo. Yep. We talk about everything. Nothing was off the table. We talked for three hours. And about, we talk about well, sex, wanna, wanna, drugs, wanna, rock and roll. I have to disclaimer it. What the fuck? We, you can have a disclaimer. But that's well, the first no, I... we didn't talk about anything juicy enough for there to be a disclaimer. I want another podcast. Okay, we'll have to have a juicy disclaimer one the next time we have you on. Absolutely, and there I want to make bullet point shit so that I can like really get the I, buddy. You are in for a treat. We we talk we talk about being high. We talk about sex and violence and politics and bullshit and how much we hate politics altogether. It's the whole. Uh, we talk about. I think we did some, most of that, actually. Yeah. But uh, um, it, we get into a little more shit. So, <laughs> I like my opinion on things minimal because that way people can't, uh, you know. Yeah. So we're warp we're gonna... them all of their their things that they like to do with with you know people and their public uh, opinions and things. See, that, so. That's what we also do. Is is uh, it's nobody's business. If everybody's consenting and everybody's adults, everybody else can fuck off. And that's what we're at. And yeah. we are brutal about that. And we, but no, that's the first no, one. Consenting and everyone's an adult. I don't give a fuck what you do. Mm -hmm. Do you do it the fuck away from me though, please. I, I give my friend, I give people that I know that come in my shop shit because they're furries. And I, I'm like, whatever. You're not hurting nobody. That's, but, it's like, like great that you're doing it but also like it's weird that you're fucking in a fursuit do you get sweaty in there what's it smell like i could imagine Embodied. yeah i got questions <laughs> i got some questions see it, it, and and i keep those questions to them they can play with it what they want whatever it's all them and but no we, we talk about all kinds of shit but i'm putting a disclaimer but no yeah we're gonna have a disclaimer episode me and you we're gonna talk about every fucking thing i don't care so <laughs> But 
All right. I, I got to go. You got to go. You guys take care. Good night. Good night. Good cats. night for having <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome. Anytime, man. Just give me a heads up and we'll 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 figure out sometime. I even know my schedule is legitimately I have I have my my calendar up here and it's like I am booked uh till the end of the month because I'm taking next Sunday off because uh Father's Day and then Monday's my birthday. So I'm taking two oh, days off from recording. And, yeah. My dad is really gonna appreciate you for that one. Yeah. So we're, 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 we're relaxing. My, my family, they, they broke down. Cause I always joke around that. I was like, father's day is the 18th birthday's the 19th. That's two gifts. There's not one gift that is. Two gifts. Yeah, that so, is. Two. But they did do something really cool for me this year. Uh, my whole family got together and they bought me a big smoker. So I have, uh, I'm going to, that's going to show up Tuesday so I can start oh. having a smoker. So yeah. Are you, are you a grilling dad? Do you like to grill? Uh, I used to, I don't do it as much cause I I'm not home till almost eight o'clock at night. So for me, I will prepare everything and I can stick it in there and just walk away for the most part. So that's the goal, <laughs> but, uh, you have a good night. Take care. I'll talk to you later on and I'll give, I'll give Derek some shit next time I see him for you. So. Yeah. Well, thank you. So have a good night. See you, you later. Too. Bye. Bye.